In the decades leading up to the Civil War, countless men and women fought valiantly to end the institution of slavery. Some people, however, may be less aware of local abolitionist John W. Jones, who dedicated nine years of his life to saving people from bondage and eventually turning Elmira into a major station of the Underground Railroad. Tucked away along Davis Street sits the original farmhouse of John W. Jones, a modest house that used to sit upon 16 acres of land and has since been converted into a museum dedicated to telling his remarkable story. Jones was born into slavery in 1817 on a plantation in Leesburg, Virginia. At the age of 27, Jones and his two half-brothers escaped, taking the Underground Railroad from Virginia to New York. They walked almost 300 miles. The last eight miles, they actually got a ride in someone's wagon to Elmira. John Jones was 27 years old. He had a dollar and 46 cents in his pocket and immediately began to seek work. Jones managed to get a season's worth of education and served an active role as a sexton for his local church and among the backdrop of the Fugitive Slave Act, served as an agent for the Underground Railroad. Talmia Aaron says Jones committed his life to the cause knowing the potential consequences. So it was a very dangerous time. Um, the penalties were high, and the penalties were also high for those who assisted those who were perceived escaping from um, slavery. His standing declaration was that he would never be taken alive, and his acquaintances knew what such a statement meant. Between 1851 and 1860, John Jones helped over 860 men, women, and children escape slavery none of whom were ever captured. Most of them made their way across the border into Canada. When the Civil War broke out, Jones worked at the Woodland Cemetery, where he gave dignified burials to Confederate soldiers from the nearby Elmira prison camp. He saw the humanity in these um, young men that were fighting this war to essentially keep people like him enslaved, um, but he saw them as just young men far away from home. Um, dying away from family. Jones buried 2,963 prisoners and kept meticulous records of each soldier and their possessions. The families of Confederate soldiers were so moved by Jones's care for them, only three bodies were removed from the cemetery. His precise record keeping also allowed Woodland to be declared a national cemetery by the federal government. So this one season of learning allowed him to be able to keep the kind of documentation that impacts history to this day. By the time Jones died in 1900, he was the wealthiest black man in the western part of New York and left an invaluable mark in the city of Elmira. He wanted equality for everyone and, and he wasn't afraid to speak up about it and that he wasn't afraid to act on those things. Matt Clinton's Big Fox WYDC in Elmira.